Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Battling and Beating Cancer here on Can TV 21. I'm Scott Seaman, and along with Charlene McMahon, we welcome you to our program. And Charlene is always by my side. As you know, I'm that 12-year trial lawyer survivor of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And Charlene is the Jefferson Award-winning uh, recipient because of her tremendous uh, champion for people with all forms of cancer, but in particular blood cancer. We welcome you to our show. And this is a special show indeed because we have Dr. Stephanie Gregory on. And we were fighting tooth and nails to see who would get to interview Dr. Gregory. And as you can tell by the scars on my face, Charlene won. Uh, so we will get to Dr. Gregory in just a, a minute or two. We're going to cut through some of the preliminaries so we have more time with Dr. Gregory. But I do want to tell you that we have been talking about the importance of survivors and patients and caregivers and family members working together with doctors and researchers. Uh, researchers to cure cancer because really it takes that combination even though we're not doctors we can do our part by raising money to put it in the hands of researchers by raising awareness so everybody knows the symptoms of blood cancer because early diagnosis is still a key to a better outcome and we can do our part the other thing that we've talked a lot about on this program is that blood cancer research is a super highway to curing cancer because so many treatments and so many major developments for all forms of cancer have all originated from the blood cancers. That's evidence of history will show you that blood cancer research is by far our biggest bang for our research dollar. And particularly in the last eight and 10 years, the results have been magnificent. And now is the time that we need to really press, raise more money because the research designs will offer all of us uh, longer lives, healthier lives. It's not only more treatments, better treatments that are more effective, but less toxic treatments. So we don't have to endure the punishing chemotherapies of years ago, for example. Well, now the rubber really hits the pavement on the superhighway to curing cancer because there's a time that all of us right here in the greater Chicagoland area can do something to help cure cancer. And we are talking, of course, about this Sunday now, September 12th, the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation's Out for Blood team will be peddling to cure lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma at the North Shore Century bike ride. We start in Ev and end at Evanston Township High School, and there's still time for you to register and get involved and make a difference. You can ride one mile, 25 miles, 100 miles, or any distance really that you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that you get out and you contribute and you participate, whether it's by riding, whether it's forming a virtual vampire team online, or just donating to a super cause. www.chicagobloodcancer.org or 888-792-9992. Come on out and earn uh, a t-shirt. Here's a version of the Out for Blood t-shirt, and it's a new one. This is something that you can mm -hmm. get. And for our people who come out and participate, an uh, Alpha Blood wristband, special bike riding jerseys are available, and also the medal. If you're like me, there's no way you're ever going to win a medal in your life, but you can come out, <laughs> support a great cause, and walk away with a gold medal. So join us on Sunday, www.chicagobloodcancer.org. Now, for our Keys to Curing Cancer segment tonight, uh, we're going to talk about surrounding yourself with the best. And, you know, we talk about cancer uh, week after week, and we say we're providing you with a lot of information. Uh, but really, I'm a shallow and superficial man, and you can tell one of my goals is to <laughs> surround myself with as many beautiful women in the studio as I possibly can. And I've really succeeded in that here tonight. But surround yourself with the best. Keep your sense of humor uh, and laughter in your life while you're going through your treatments. It's very important. Faith and family, very important. Uh, get an advocate or a caregiver that takes care of you, looks out for your interests. In my case, I've got the best in Charlene. But if you don't have a family member, there are organizations, people you can reach out to, Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation, for one. Make sure you've got somebody to help you go through this process. Get the best doctors and the best treatments available for you. That makes all the difference in the world. And treatments mean not only the best of conventional treatments, but uh, clinical trials as well. And I know Charlene and Dr. Gregory are going to be talking about that as well. But cancer research really is the key to all of our long-term survival. 
on tonight's show, Charlene and I are really practicing what we preach when we say surround yourself with the best. Dr. Stephanie Gregory is the best. Uh, and you can get on if you've got a question, 738-1060, and talk to the best in the business and Dr. Gregory. Uh, and I'm just going to introduce her briefly before I think, turn things over to Charlene. She is Professor of Medicine and Director of the Section of Hematology at Rush University Medical Center. And we could spend the whole show talking about her credentials. But if you ask her patients, they love her because they know that they are being given the best care. They are being given a wonderful treatment. They have somebody on their side who is looking out for them as a doctor and as an advocate. And really her compassion, I think, is, is legendary to all of her patients. And if you want to talk to doctors uh, who are involved in the areas of hematology and oncology, I had the privilege of sitting next to Dr. Gregory at the uh, International uh, Lymphoma Symposium that was held here in Chicago. I don't remember when it was still cold. It was early spring. And all the doctors from across the, the country were coming up one after another to say hello, to pay homage to Dr. Gregory, to get a hug, because that's the special mm -hmm. type of lady that she is. So tonight they're going to talk a little myeloma, some big picture issues, and I am going to disappear, and your screen will be covered with beauty right after we talk about uh, Meckler, Bulger, Tilson, Merrick, and Pearson. Thank you, Scott. Um, I wanted to say uh, welcome to Battling Being in Cancer, and this is um, this program is made possible by Meckler, Bulger, Tilson, Merrick, and Pearson. And now I want to just go and introduce and thank you, Dr. Gregory. Welcome. It's hard for me to say Stephanie because she's just a wonderful person, but uh, we welcome her to Battling and Beating Cancer tonight. Uh, what I wanted to start out with, because of course we've talked about the leukemia and lymphoma before, but I wanted to cover myeloma tonight. So I wanted to kind of ask you if you can tell the viewers what is myeloma and uh, multiple myeloma, they call it. Yes, multiple myeloma is. It's called multiple because it affects multiple organs in the body, but it's really a blood cancer that starts in the bone marrow and can affect the bones, the blood, the kidney, so multiple organs. And it can be um, a painful disorder because it can make holes in the bones and you can get fractures uh, by very simple movements, actually. Mm -hmm. And what are the symptoms? What are some of the symptoms that you would get when you have myeloma? You know, it, it classically can occur with back pain. Often uh, there may be some collapse of the vertebral bodies and patients may complain of severe back pain. Um, it is not uncommon to really have patients just routinely have an abnormal blood test picked up. Uh, it can be diagnosed through the blood. So uh, sometimes you have symptoms of pain, other times you may just be anemic or you may have no symptoms at all. So just so we don't scare everybody because everybody has back pain, especially when we get older. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> we all do that. But, uh, I mean, there's other things going on besides just back pain. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the back pain, they say that because the disease can usually affect older. Um, it, it was commonly described in older males, and uh, they would have an acute episode, really sudden um, collapse of a vertebrae, excruciating pain. So the chronic pain that all of us have from mm -hmm. lifting something or walking or sleeping in one position is not the kind of pain I'm talking about. Or just getting old. Or just getting old. <laughs> right. right. Um, and how do you diagnose uh, uh, multiple myeloma? Well, multiple myeloma is, as I said, often it is sort of picked up by the patient being anemic. They may go to their primary care doctor and usually the primary care doctor does blood work. Right, on and a, a routine basis. A routine basis, basis. Right. and mm -hmm. they often will look at some of the chemistries in the blood and find um, the protein in the blood is elevated. And so a high protein in the blood is one of the first signs that maybe we're dealing with an abnormal production of uh, protein from the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. um, the protein that I'm talking about is made from certain blood cells in the bone marrow called plasma cells. And they produce the protein that actually all of us have. That protein makes antibodies and helps us fight infection. Mm -hmm. But in multiple myeloma, the protein is made abnormally and the antibodies are made abnormally. So infections can be a manifestation of multiple myeloma. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, there's a lot of things going into it, just not a back pain or 
there's a lot of multiple things that can come so up. So abnormal they, blood counts. Right. Uh, and then the definitive diagnosis often is made from a bone marrow mm -hmm. test. And what are the standard treatments that you would get with multiple myeloma? Well, the progress in multiple myeloma has been a dramatic story. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 20 years ago, we were talking about patient, patients with multiple myeloma living 36 months. So you think about three years. And the only treatments we had back then were actually pills. And the most common treatment back then was called melphalan, a, a pill that you could take. And it was always uh, joined with a drug called prednisone, which is used in all kinds of diseases. Mm -hmm. I mean, many, many of us have had prednisone over the years. And that would often help the pain of patients. It would bring the abnormal protein back down. The anemia would get better but the patient still died within three years. Mm -hmm. And so what happened in the past really 10 years is many, many new drugs that actually target not only the cancer cell called the plasma cell in the bone marrow, but it also alters the microenvironment where the tumor cells are growing. And the microenvironment of the, of the tumor cells actually makes the tumor cells grow. So there are now drugs that inhibit the microenvironment. And one of the drugs that became very popular for the treatment of um, multiple myeloma is the old drug thalidomide. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the thalidomide mm -hmm. babies? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And they found out that thalidomide is really an anti-cancer drug now. It cuts oh. off the blood supply mm. to cancers. And it's used in multiple myeloma in many, many treatments. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I'm going to tell you something real quick on uh, Scott. Uh, I think he, he was on to something many years ago because he said, um, I think the way you can cure cancer is just cut the blood supply off. Well, Scott, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I said, well, you were on to something then. Well, the so. blood vessels feed the cancer. Right, right. And actually, in most cancers, they find an increased number of blood vessels. Yeah. So and it should have been three years. Yes, absolutely. Of a lawyer, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, we, when we think about tumors, uh, the blood cancers, except for lymphomas, the blood cancers don't really make great big tumors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cells that are abnormal and they circulate through the body and these abnormal cancer cells um, are sort of the tumor that we're talking about. So when I say to a patient, oh, well, your tumor is uh, responding very nicely to treatment, and they'll say, well, you never told me I had a tumor. Mm -hmm. You told me I had multiple myeloma, or you told me I had leukemia. Where's the tumor? So we refer to the abnormal blood cells that circulate through the body and in the bone marrow as the tumor's tumor. It's not really a whole big lump that you can see like a breast cancer or mm -hmm. a lung cancer. Right, right. And um, 